to Christ Point Oasis. You're welcome. Today, we are going to be doing a lesson about how to respond to situations when uh, we feel that we've been done wrong, when we feel that wrongs are uh, actually being enacted. You know, um, so, sometimes some people feel that they want revenge. Have you ever been in that kind of situation? Yes, I think uh, it's human nature to feel like that now and again. Ah, so you really wanted revenge, huh? There have been times. So, so did you? Well, I think that um, remembering my godly principles has kept me from really acting out on that, but it doesn't take away the um, initial uh, reaction or response to feeling as though you want to um, uh, give back what you are receiving. So are you talking about since you've been a Christian or are you just talking about period? I think since I've been a Christian. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm going to say, I mean, in all honesty, mm -hmm. you know, throughout my life, um, I have done some things, I think, especially in my youth, to, uh, in a sense, I could say vengeance may have been the motivator. A little tit for tat? I think so. Mm -hmm. A little tit for tat, a little eye for eye, mm -hmm. two for two. That's right. Yeah. But um, the question is, is, you know, what does God expect of us? And so we're going to look at a lesson that I believe will examine that. Uh, there's a lot of scripture about it. And um, basically, it'll be very applicable to what's going on in our world right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Be blessed. Be blessed. Behind me is what remains of a local sporting goods store by the name of Champs in Saigon, a local restaurant near University Mall in Tampa, Florida. Last weekend, what began as a peaceful protest actually turned into violence. Several places, uh, businesses were broken into. They were looted. They were burned down. And you know what some people call this justice? Some people actually believe that Burning these down, looting these places is justice. But is that really what it is? My argument is that it's not justice. It's just merely vengeance. That's really what it is. The problem with it is that vengeance belongs to the Lord. You see, throughout the Bible, we read messages over and over again that tell us not to repay evil for evil. The scripture is very clear on this issue. In fact, in Romans, the 12th chapter, in verse 12, it says, Do not avenge yourselves, beloved, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. The problem is, is because we're all human, we deal with temptation. And see, revenge, revenge is a human drive. It's a human drive that's akin to bitterness. It's, it's akin to wrath and malice. And, and so therefore it's easy for us to come up with the excuse, well, look what they did. They did it first. So therefore we ought to get them back. And so that becomes the motivation for all of the turmoil that we see, the terrorizing of various places tearing down buildings. Proverbs, the 24th chapter and 29th verse says, do not say I will do to him as he has done to me. I will repay the man according to his work. Now the scripture says that you shouldn't do that. You see, the reason is because these drives bring about wickedness. Wickedness is when we function to hurt someone else. And you know what they say? Two wrongs don't make a right. You see, the, the reason that we have injustice in our world, it really goes back to the concept of covetousness. We have individuals who want it all for themselves. 
We live in a society that's based on some people being at the top and others being at the bottom. And those at the top want to remain at the top. And those at the bottom, a lot of times, are those who are pressed in order to keep them there. That system is in, inadequate. That system is, 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 is wrong, especially when individuals are mistreated because of being different. We recognize that, but the problem is we can't result to wrong in order to bring about right. It just doesn't work. Two wrongs don't make a right. Do you know what the measure of all behavior is? The measure of all behavior is love. Love is the standard. Jesus began to acknowledge it on the Sermon of the Mount. Jesus said that we are not only to love our neighbor, but Jesus says, love your enemy and pray for them who persecute you. Matthew, the fifth chapter and verse 44. In fact, Jesus said in Luke, the sixth chapter and the verses 27 and, and 28, he says it this way. He says, but, but those of you who will listen, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Now, I know that most people don't want to hear that. They're trying to figure out what good is going to come out of that. But I want you to see a theological rationale to help you to understand that, that God's hand is in motion. In, in Proverbs, the 20th chapter, in verse 22, he says, Do not say, I will avenge this evil. But it says, Wait on the Lord, and he will deliver you. We need to learn how to wait on the Lord. You see, it's often the case that God has a bigger plan than we can really wrap our minds around. God is working in all things to bring about his good. He really is. I mean, he's working in things that are good. He's working in things that are bad. But he's working to bring about good. God knows the heart of human beings. God knows who's going to do his will and who, who doesn't do his will. He understands. He's marked out the times. He knows. And the thing that we have to do is learn how to trust him and stay on his side. We need to always communicate his nature. And his nature is love. See, when we wait on him, then after a while, we'll see what he's doing. Genesis. 42, you begin to read about Joseph. And you know, earlier, Joseph was actually thrown in a pit, sold off as a slave to Egypt by his own brothers. He was betrayed by his own brethren. Now, years later, after Joseph had gone through a lot, because sometimes we have to go through a lot to get to where we need to be. Joseph has now, he has now uh, achieved the highest status. He's the second in charge in relation to Egypt. And now all of a sudden, there's a famine in the land. And his brothers are sent down to Egypt. They don't even recognize Joseph. But they have to ask him for bread, for grain. And Joseph, he could have got his revenge. He, he could have held that grudge against him. He could have functioned from those negative motivations. But instead, love was his standard. He forgave them. That's what he did. He let them know who he was. He revealed himself to them. And then he brought them down and blessed them. His brothers were afraid. They thought 
especially after their father passed away, that Joseph would treat them negatively. But Joseph did. Because see, Joseph was a man of God, and as a man of God, and love is what controlled his actions. Is it love that controls your actions? Is that the measure of all of your behavior? You see, God had a bigger plan. And that bigger plan was to provide a place for his people to go so that they would flourish and they would grow. They were put in Bashan and they began to grow. And that was what God was doing. Joseph was able to see it after a while. When he was in the pit, he couldn't see it. When he was in the prison, he couldn't see it. But now that he is at the peak that God has placed him on, he's able to look and see with clear vision that God had a plan. And so all he had to do is wait on the Lord. You see, our, our problem is that sometimes we want God to be on our side when we really need to be on his side. And when we're on his side, we'll be waiting on him. Now, there's nothing wrong with being dissatisfied with injustice. It's nothing wrong with ex exposing the inequities of discrimination. I mean, I'm reminded of David. And uh, David was being hunted like a wild animal, I saw. And there was a couple of times that David had the opportunity to take Saul's life. But he didn't. He didn't. One time he cut off the cloth, part of the clothing of Saul. But afterward, David exposed, he communicated, look, I could have killed you, but here I am. I'm not going to kill you. And Saul would, oh, I'm sorry, and he would apologize. David tried to expose the injustice to Saul. But David was wise enough to recognize that some things don't change very quickly. So therefore, distance was maintained until God delivered. But the thing that God says, he says, wait on him. He'll deliver you. Now, so, so we don't have to be idle. But we don't need to lose focus while we wait. I, I think we should be educating individuals. I think peaceful protest is fine. But we have to care what other people think. We really do. And so therefore, how we communicate is very important. Often, I said, we want God to be on our side. And so therefore, we want him to be okay with everything that we do. But no, we need to be on his side. And we need to be fulfilling his purpose and his plan. Often, injustice opens a greater door for a message of hope. Often injustice allows us to be more effective when it comes to communicating his message. Now, let me tell you this. The presence of injustice is not an indication that God has lost control. God never loses control. What injustice is, it's an indication of human free will. That's really what it is. You see, I want you to know that people have a bent toward wickedness. I mean, that's why you see all of the destruction that has occurred as a result of the turmoil. Because of this, then, you know, sometimes it seems like times of injustice just prevail. They really do. Throughout the scripture, many have asked the question, why does the wicked prosper? Why does that kind of situation occur? You know, the most difficult thing about it is that God's people can come can, can become frustrated. We can sometimes become confused when we see all of that negative. And sometimes we've been tempted to do the wrong things in the midst of times like these. Sometimes we're tempted to take things in our own hands. Sometimes we're tempted to fight back in means and in ways that we shouldn't fight back. Sometimes we're tempted like that during troubled times. But I really want you to know that troubled times are some of the best opportunities 
to display God's power. Yeah, to glorify Him. You see, I want you to know that when we walk according to the way He's commanded us to walk, He's glorified in us. The scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, in verse 15, make sure that no one repays evil for evil. Always pursue what is good for one another and for all people. You see, when we pursue good for one another and we pursue good for all people, then God is glorified in our lives. The world see, sees his light shining through us. First Peter, the third chapter in verse nine, it says, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. So instead of insulting others, we need to learn how to bless others. Instead of showing evil and communicating evil and acting evil, no, he says we ought to be doing good. That's what we've been called to. You see, God wants to demonstrate righteousness through us. That's what he wants to do. That's God's plan. His plan is to display his righteousness through us. I mean, that's what you saw on the cross. You, you saw God in the flesh lifted up on the cross. No greater injustice ever done because he was totally innocent. But yet he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But before he died, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He was talking about being lifted up on a cross. He was talking about being crucified. He was talking about a greatest act of love. If he was lifted up and people could see his awesome love for humanity and understand that he was the sacrifice, the propitiation, the peace, our sins that they be drawn to him. He glorified God. He glorified God. And he is glorified. If we could deny ourselves like that, if we could just take up our cross. You see, sometimes we get so focused on what's going on in the world that we forget that we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We season this world in which we live because our behavior is not reactive. Instead, it's proactive. We, we function in a way that shows the principle of love written on our hearts. God will reward everyone. He'll reward everyone according to their works. And you know why? Because God is a deliverer. That's who he is. God is a deliverer. It's sad to see all of the devastation. It's sad to see that somebody would go and tear down the property of another, to take away the job of another, to hurt their own community or even the community of another. It's sad. Some people just don't think. Young people 
in the Proverbs, the scripture says, don't go with those whose feet are swift to do evil, to shed blood. Don't go with those individuals. But look for people who seek peace. Peaceful protest is good. When I look back in the 60s, the 50s and the 60s, the era that came right before my birth, great accomplishments were brought about because of peaceful protest that were nonviolent. Martin Luther King, who believed in the principles of love, felt that if individuals would begin to see love, that the enemy of injustice would clearly be identified and individuals would stand against that. And so therefore, through nonviolent protest, individuals saw true injustice when individuals were treated harshly and misused. But when you have individuals who are going loot, burn, and destroy, the only thing that they do is undermine all the efforts of those who protest peacefully. Hmm. The overall message, don't repay evil for evil, but instead, return good for evil. Use your voice, speak out, not in a way that's demeaning, but in a way that educates. Let people know. The Bible teaches that we're one people. It teaches that we're all from one blood. We all had one parent. And we all came from heaven. And so therefore, since we're one, maybe we ought to treat one another better. Maybe we ought to join our hands together and help one another breathe. Will you help me breathe? <laughs>